Welcome back. Today we are going to be checking out my 1968 Fender Bronco. Now this is a, uh, we're, we're going to go through and just see what this amp needs. Similar to the uh, Super Reverb we just looked at. We're just going to evaluate what kind of repairs it needs, whether um, it is something I should keep or sell, and then use this as an opportunity to order some parts, fix it up as needed, and then move on to other projects. All right, so the Fender Broncos are basically, as far as I know, identical to the Vibro Champs of the same era. These were just rebranded to sell with the Bronco guitars. So these were sold in a kit, similar to what they do now. Um, but this is just a Vibro Champ. For a long time, you could get these for a screaming deal because people were looking for Vibro Champs, but not looking for Broncos. Um, slightly less collectible. This one is a 1968 this is a drip edge. This metal around the grill cloth indicates that. That's basically 1968, early 69 sometimes has this. Uh, but we'll double check the serial number. We'll take a look at the back just to confirm that. Can't remember if I've done any work to this. I think I changed out the three prong cord, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but I seem to recall this thing zapping me a couple times when it had the two prong cord on it. So, uh, and it has a three prong now. So, all right, let's flip it around, take a look at the back of the chassis, and then we'll open it up and see what it needs. Okay, looking at the back of the chassis, pretty dang clean. You can see our serial number A23444. That puts it squarely in the middle of 1968. Let's see if we can see anything on the speaker. Kind of a worn out serial code there. I don't know if I can even make that out, um, but it is listed as a Fender original speaker. A lot of times you can get a, uh, the speakers in these are not as good as some of the modern Weber equivalents. People like to swap those out or sometimes even put a 10 in there instead of the six inch speaker. Um, we'll take a look at options for that if I do end up fixing this thing up or putting a lot of work into this. It sounds pretty good as is though. Okay, let's pull the chassis, take a closer look at what may be needed. All right, chassis is out and on the bench. Let's take a look, as we always do, at our transformers first. Uh, let's see, looks like we have, okay, 68 here, a 68 here. You can see these have a different code for the first three digits than our other guys, um, but still the 022772 there. Let's see, 022905. But I believe these are still, uh, these are original Transformers. They're from 1968, as we can see. So 12th week of 68, uh, seventh week of 68. Um, and I believe they are still Schumacher Transformers, even though they have a different code for the prefix. I will look that up for one of my next videos because I keep being uncertain about that. Um, but maybe someone else watching knows. And if you do, post a comment. Just a quick intermission here, uh, coming back to this after actually completing the rest of the video, but I had to do some research on this 831 code. Um, it turns out I was correct in my assumption before that 606 as your code does indicate a Schumacher transformer, which is what I was under the impression all fenders from this era used, but I've learned something new. This 831 code indicates a company called better coil and transformer. Now these are, as far as we know, and from what I could find online, these are original to the amp and were used sparingly uh, for some amps in between 1966 and 1968. And there's no audible difference or anything from the Schumacher transformers. They're by all accounts identical, but were maybe used when there were shortages from Schumacher um, or just, you know, for other production reasons, these 831 coded, uh, better coil and transformer transformers are found in some amps. I have worked on and seen the guts of maybe close to a hundred 
or so vintage fenders uh, in my time doing this. Never seen this before or never taken notice of it. So if this is something anyone else has info on or has seen before, please let me know. But otherwise, we'll just move forward knowing that this Fender Bronco um, has these transformers. Kind of interesting. All right, back to the rest of the video. We can see the chassis also has a 68, 18th week. Um, let's see, original can filter cap. That should be changed out. Um, you can get these from CE Distribution or CE branded one from other places. This is a multi, for those that don't know, this is a capacitor that is actually, let's see, three or four capacitors in there. Yeah, so 20 microfarad. Uh, let me get you a better view. 20 microfarad at 450 volts for one, two, three, four um, separate ca uh, caps that are inside of that can. And you can actually see here it says MFD and volts DC. That's microfarads and volts DC. This should be changed out. This is long overdue for being changed. Um, I think at this point, I knew I was just gonna be playing this at home, so no reason to do it. I didn't need it even for recording necessarily. And we have a Fender branded tube, a groove tube for the other 12AX7. These are both 12AX7s. Have a Gold Lion 6V6, I believe. Yeah. And then a Rectifier tube, let's see. Not sure which brand that is, it's a little worn away. I'll pull that and see if I can find what that is. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, flip this thing over, see what's going on on the inside. Okay, inside the chassis, we have a slightly cleaner chassis stamp for our day code. And uh, it does look like I changed out this power cable at some point. This is definitely new and also kind of looks like my work. Uh, we have a dedicated ground point and this wire is at least slightly longer than all the others. Uh, this is the other side of the multi-can cap. Now some people will replace these differently. They'll leave that in place for the looks, the style, they'll disconnect from the actual circuit. And then we'll put a small board somewhere in here um, attached to terminals, maybe these guys, and then just have four axial modern style caps um, that are here in place of this capacitor. That's, you know, that's one way to go. I for whatever reason, prefer to just get the can cap and swap it out. They are kind of a pain to solder in place. These terminals, you really need to get out the big soldering iron for. Um, but it's not that big of a deal, especially since you're going to do it once in, you know, 20 years for an amp like this. Uh, we can see all original caps going through here. So realistically, I should probably change out this guy this guy, this guy, and this guy. These are 25 microfarad, 25 volt DC caps. Um, let's see, is our other guy here something different? This one's a 10 microfarad, 25 volt. These are all electrolytic caps that are overdue to be changed. Same as our multi-can cap. Um, Definitely could stand to change those out. Now, another thing that'll happen in these amps is it is worth working with these resistors to get a better operating point for the voltage. All of these vintage fender amps basically are in a situation where they are not operating at the intended voltage. They're gonna be way above because wall voltage, at least in the United States, has increased from what it was when these were being manufactured. A lot of times it, you'll see, you know, say 120 volts uh, AC at the wall. Well, your power transformer is dumb. It does not know that that has changed. All it's going to do is a ratio stepping up a voltage 
from what it sees on the AC side to some value on the DC side. And that ratio has not changed since 1968 or whenever your fender amp was manufactured. So if we have a higher wall voltage, we're gonna get higher DC voltage, which then gets rectified by a rectifier tube in this case, or by a series of diodes and a uh, solid state rectified amplifier. That voltage then goes on to the rest of the circuit. But in these amps, you could easily end up in a situation where you end up with a DC voltage um, that by the time it gets to your circuit and, and into your power supply and everything, is well above what components are rated for. So one thing that I do, especially in these smaller amps where it uh, seems to be that that change is proportionately a larger change to the rest of the circuit than it is in something else, uh, is to play with these values to see if we can get it to a closer operating point to what the ideal voltage is for these amps as it was designed. So um, I'll take a look at my part stash. I, I think I might have to order at least the 10 microfarad for this. I don't think we'll be able to do the work tonight on this amplifier. Oh, especially since I don't have the multi-can cap. Uh, one thing of note too is that these are different in the vibro champ versus just the champ. There's an extra capacitor in there if I'm remembering correctly. So the multi-can cap between the vibro champ or Bronco and just a normal champ amplifier is different. You cannot swap one in for the other. So I'll, I'll order that part. I will order these four capacitors. Everything else looks original, looks good. I don't think there's need for any other accommodations to get this thing running and making some great sound. But we will, when we do the work, walk through the process of getting the power supply voltage to a reasonable level. Okay, this is gonna be a short one because this is a small amp, not a lot of components to walk through, but talk about a good amp. These vibro Vibro champs or Broncos are really great. Uh, if you find a deal on one, especially if it's all original like this, uh, snag it if you can. These are also something that if you're looking into getting into amp building, this is a great first build is one of these circuits. Um, all right, that's about it for this one. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you on the next one.